Well, we begin with a political bombshell in Toronto. The city's mayor is stepping down after admitting to having an affair with a female staff member. I recognize that permitting this relationship to develop was a serious error in judgment on my part. While I deeply regret having to step away from a job that I love in a city that I love even more, I believe in my heart it is best to fully commit myself to the work that is required to repair these most important relationships. John Tory made his announcement in a short address to reporters yesterday evening, just one hour after the Toronto Star published an investigation revealing the affair. For a closer look, let's bring in David Ryder. He's the City Hall Bureau Chief for the Toronto Star and one of the reporters who helped break the story. David, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, good morning. Obviously being sensitive here to the fact that, you know, you can't and won't be revealing your sources here, but wondering if you can give us a little bit more insight into how you and your team broke this story. Yeah, so I have a three-member bureau at City Hall, and we, you know, talk to people all the time, and you get past all kinds of tidbits about gossip, and, and some of it, you know, a lot of it is not true, and a lot of it is just not reportable or not news. We heard quite a while ago, like actually like before Christmas, that there was something going on with the mayor's marriage, um, which on its own in Canadian politics, we wouldn't necessarily do a story unless they sort of made it official. Um, and then more recently got a more specific tip that in fact, uh, that the mayor had a relationship that could be considered improper. Uh, we knew it was with uh, a woman who had worked in the mayor's office. We didn't know uh, when we started making inquiries if the uh, if the relationship started when, in fact, he was her boss. Um, and then that picked up steam to the point where we were pretty sure that was the case. And we put detailed questions to the mayor's office uh, yesterday afternoon. And then we're told we would receive uh, a reply, which we did, which we uh, quickly published, which was him acknowledging the relationship and that it was improper. Um, and then that followed quickly. We, we had heard there was a strong chance that he would resign. And that followed about a an hour later with his uh, fairly dramatic news conference where in fact he said he is stepping down as the mayor of Toronto. And are you surprised that that is what he decided to do? As you say that the timeline here is pretty quick from when you started to put those questions to the mayor's office to when he came out and announced that he would be resigning. Does that surprise you? Um, I'd say yes and no. Um, yes, if I stand back as a political reporter who has, you know, watched his career at City Hall from the beginning, and certainly, you know, even only a couple of days ago, it seemed unfathomable. So that's the no part. The yes part is that I'd say um, on Friday was the first term, first time I heard from the people around him, who are some of my sources, that he was considering it serious enough that he might have to resign. And I think the big question in the post Me Too era was, did the relationship start when in fact he was, you know, I think some people would say the most powerful man in Toronto and she was a junior staffer in his office. Um, and then when it was obvious that we believed that to be the case and we were gonna put direct pointed questions to him on that, that it, it certainly seemed a distinct response, a distinct po possibility, pardon me, and then yesterday afternoon, after our questions went in, I heard very quickly back from the people I know that in fact he would resign and, and that is in fact what he did. Do you think there are any more revelations that the public, that the people of Toronto should be bracing for on this story? Yeah, I mean, I think there's certainly, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are questioning, like, you know, would he resign over this? Uh, 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 you know, is there more? I think in any situation like this, I mean, there always is more. There is going to be more, you know, there could be more reported detail about their relationship and what exactly it involved. Um, uh, and, you know, and there are certainly suggestions. People are asking, you know, was this the only case? Uh, and at that point, I don't have anything I can report on that. Um because he is no longer going to be no longer mayor, um, you know, there's a question we have to weigh as journalists about what's the public interest in in the details. But it's certainly going to be lots coming forward because he asked for an integrity commissioner investigation, which means City Hall's integrity commissioner is going to look at. And I think at the very least, we'll get some idea of clarity about what the rules are, because when in the past week or so, when we were really digging into did the mayor break any rules if, in fact, the relationship um, overlapped with both of their times in the mayor's office? 
the, the, the answer we got back, there is really a gray area. There's some general guidance on kind of avoiding favoritism to somebody you're in a relationship with, but there didn't seem to be any actual, you know, prohibition against it. So there's going to be lots to come on that, which is more policy. And there's also a mayor's race heating up. I've, I've, uh, since the, the pretty much as soon as the mayor said, I will step down, my phone started, you know, buzzing with people talking about who's going to run and uh, some people who are thinking about running. So we're going to have uh, that coming. So there's still the story's not over by any stretch along with whatever the integrity commissioner might come out with, along with whoever may end up as mayor, are there any other sort of pressing and lingering questions that you still have about what's what you've been able to report so far, you and your team? Yeah, I mean, I guess I think, and I don't know if we'll know this or know it very soon. I mean, I think the biggest question for anybody who's watched John Tory is, like, what was he thinking? Like, why would he risk the mayoralty, something that he desperately wanted for so long and a job he said he loved. And I watching him every day, I know he loved. Why would he risk it for something like this? Um, you know, he 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 was kind of a political, you know, he has kind of a, born a blue blood, but he was a bit of a political loser. He, he, you know, he had tried to run for mayor once and failed. And then he was a leader of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Party and tried to take a uh, provincial office as premier. And he failed at that. And then in 2014, he took a big shot at uh, being mayor of Toronto and he won and he kept winning. He became a political winner. He, uh, you know, he easily won re-election twice. And although Toronto is in you know dire straits because of the pandemic, like many big cities and probably more so because we have a lot of, uh, uh, costs and other issues that other places don't, you know, he was seen as the steady hand at the tiller after the chaotic Rob Ford mayor mayoralty, who was going to help lead us, continue leading us out of the pandemic. And the idea that he would risk all of that uh, for some kind of an illicit relationship, I think just boggles a lot of minds and including, I've talked to people who are extremely close to him who, when I told them what we were hearing before we broke the news, they honestly didn't believe it. And in fact, when I got the first tip, I honestly didn't believe it. So that, that to me is the biggest question. David, you talked about the city and the people of Toronto, and of course, a lot of issues that that city is facing, whether you're talking about housing, whether you're talking about, you know, trying to get back on track after the pandemic, recent violence on the TTC. What will John Tory's departure and the upcoming mayoral race, what will that mean when you're thinking about these issues and the impact on those issues? Uh, well, it adds a big unwelcome dose of instability uh, to a city that already, you know, seemed to be kind of teetering on the edge of it. And I think uh, I've heard that from some councillors, like expressing kind of fear for the city. Um, yeah, we, uh, you know, the pandemic impacts are still hitting Toronto in terms of uh, huge loss of revenue. We've got a, a budget that's only balanced on the hopes of a massive bailout, more than a billion dollars from the provincial and federal governments. No guarantee that's going to turn up. You mentioned the recent uh, violence on the, the public transit system and, and elsewhere, especially seeming random kinds of violence, which some people say is linked to the, the crisis in lack of services for mental health. The housing crisis, uh, you know, so many people can't uh, can't even afford any kind of home in Toronto. So all of that, um, uh, you know, I think Torontonians felt some assurance that John Tory was out there every day because he was, you know, in the media all the time saying, yes, it's difficult. And yes, you know, we've been tested through the pandemic and now we've got these challenges ahead, but I will get us through that through this. And suddenly he's gone. Uh, so there is a lot of there is a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of un un uneasiness and a lot of fear, and uh, I'm probably, I'm sure, people are hoping that we'll get uh, a, a new mayor who can, can, you know, convey that kind of confidence uh, as soon as possible. David, just finally here, as as you've brought up, John Tory, of course, coming coming in after those tumultuous Rob Ford years, had been promised as sort of this steady hand. What does all of this mean for his legacy? Do you think that he will ever move past this, or is this his legacy now? I mean, I, you know, who knows what he'll do? He's a, he's still a very well-connected, well-respected man, although obviously he's, he's under a big cloud now. He's almost 69 years old. He'll turn 69 in, in May, and he's 
he's quite wealthy. He doesn't he doesn't need a job. Um, as far as his legacy, I mean, I think right now the cloud is kind of all we can see because uh, it is you know such an unexpected kind of bombshell that's gone off. I think with a bit of distance, he can say that he did what he promised in that he did. You know, Toronto was in international headlines and kind of a joke on late night TV for all the wrong reasons while Rob Ford was mayor and uh, leading up to the 2014 election. John Tory did get the city back on track in lots of ways. Um, you know, he was uh, always out trying to get international business for the city. And uh, through the pandemic, I think he can very um, rightfully say that he, along with a couple of other leaders, helped keep the city on track during a major crisis. Uh, Toronto is now one of the most heavily vaccinated cities in the world, and that's due in large part to John Tory and uh, others' efforts to get people vaccinated. Um, and the result is that, you know, we have not suffered, uh, although there was a lot of suffering, we have not suffered as much as some other big cities. So I think with a bit of distance, people will say, you know, obviously ended in a terrible way, but that he did uh, do good for the city. Um, it's just, I think, uh, kind of a shocking end to to you know what a lot of people would consider a very successful eight year run. Okay, well, David, I think we will leave it there. We really appreciate your time this morning. After what uh, it sounds like has been a very very busy couple of days, both for you and members of your team as well. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it this morning. Yeah, no problem. David Ryder, City Hall Bureau Chief for the Toronto Star.